The Whistler. Presented by the United States Air Forces in Europe. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Alongside the harbor warehouse. Frank? Uh, good girl, Doris. You're right on time. Oh, Frank, it is you. Safe and Well, safe. not quite. Get going. Leave the lights off. Where to? Uh, somewhere where we can talk. My place? Oh, no. Now, turn here. Right. The uh, captain of the Malaga said Pier 12 would be deserted. We can drive out to the end of it and talk there. You are being careful. Well, I have to be. I trust you and Ben Watson, Doris. That's all. Anybody else would just love to know that Frank Gentry was back from Manila and back in business. You're taking quite a chance, Frank. You're high on the government's undesirable aliens. Oh, this is a big deal, sweetheart. It's worth a chance. Oh, here's Pier 12. Uh, now, right out to the end. <laughs> Great place for a conference. Safe place, anyway. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah. Now... Now, oh. Doris. We got time for a kiss, huh? Long time, baby. Yes, it is. Was the trip all right? Yeah, it was okay. Just a handful of passengers. Only one of them worried me. Well, the captain didn't know you. No, the captain isn't a worry. He makes a business of getting people where they want to go. There was another guy on board. Well, you've certainly lost him now. The signals worked. Everybody did his part. Uh, including you, baby. I won't forget it. I don't think you will, Frank. I won't let you. Well... What's the plan? Like I said, Doris, lots of people will be watching for me. That's why you'll pick up the plates. Plate? Well, I always said a quick way to make money is to print your own. Yeah, this will be perfect stuff. Garando did the engraving. Garando? I thought he was deported, sent back to Mexico. That's our deal. We're getting them back in the country in exchange for the plates. Just how is this little miracle to be accomplished? Simple, sweetheart. The modern medium of flight. Oh, sure. It'll work. It happens tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Look, Frank, I'll help all I can, but I'm not taking the chance of walking into an airport and being... Airport? Hit... You think I'm crazy? He's landing in Morristown. Morristown? An abandoned mining town in Nevada. Oh. Then Watson found it. Nobody's been there in years. Oh, here. And a map. You'll need it. I'd go up there myself, but like I said, there was one guy on the boat that worried me. I'd rather lay low for a while. Now, I just go there and and wait? Right. Mm. At the Buckhorn Hotel. Name's still in the front. And you'll be okay. I wouldn't let you take any chances. Tell me. Yeah. Hmm? What's this? Money. Real money. You'll have to pay the pilot 500 get Garando into a motel someplace outside of Vegas. Frank, you're quite a guy. You really know how to set things up. Uh, this time I'm going to make one big killing and then stay clear of this stuff. Now what's the matter? Don't go getting sore. Where are you going? Well, I just... Just want a breath of air, that's all. Hey, now, baby. What's wrong? 
Look, I appreciate how you feel. I mean, thinking I might get hurt. Frank, I, I do worry about you. Oh, good, baby, good. Only... Frank, please. Hold me. Sure. Hold me tight. Yeah. That better? That's perfect. Doris. Doris, what a... I've just made sure, Frankie. Made sure of a hundred thousand dollars just for me. lightning silhouetted the abandoned mining town of Morristown against the darkening skies. The deserted Silver Slipper Saloon and other skeleton buildings are still there, but leaning against each other for support. Inside the Buckhorn Hotel, you feel comfortable and safely alone as you cross the wooden floored lobby. And then... Well. What? Hello. Who? Who? Up here, lady, on the balcony. I know what's left of it. Well, who... Who are you? Name's Rick Carlin. I'm not the hotel detective. Some place, huh? I'll be right down. It's a shock, isn't it, Doris? Finding someone else here in the old hotel. You thought you'd be very much alone and wanted to be. It's so necessary to what's ahead, isn't it? But now there's this stranger, Rick Carlin. You wonder what he wants, what he might know. You wonder about Frank's remarks about the man on the boat who worried him. There. The old fireplace seems to draw just fine. Yes. <laughs> you know, you're not the most talkative person in the world. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. You see, I... What's that? Sound like a car stopping. That is. Station wagon. We're going to have more company. Funny, isn't it? Funny? This little burg's been a ghost town for years, and then all of a sudden something brings it back to life. I, I don't know what you mean. It seems to me it's just coincidence. Sure. Coincidence, that's what it is. Well, come in, folks, out of the storm. Come on, come on, come on. Warm yourselves by the fire. Oh, thanks, <laughs> mister. Sure looks inviting. Come on, Sally. Uh, we're the Masons, Mac and Sally. <laughs> the tourists. Mac and Sally, nice to know you. I'm Rick Carlin. How do you do? And uh, this... Uh, Doris Evans. Glad to know you. Oh, now, this is real chummy, huh? What brought you folks to the party? Party? Uh, oh, <laughs> sure, Party. Yeah, we are probably just like you. Wanted to wait to see if this storm let up. We saw a car in front. Figured somebody knew something. I mean, about the right place to stay. Uh-huh. Well, this is the right place, right, Miss Evans? Well, it's very quaint. Golly, this fire sure helps. All we need are the hot buttered rum. Hey, how about that? I, I got a little something out in the car. No hot buttered rums, but uh, hang on, folks. I'll see what I can share up. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, things are sure getting chummy. Yes, Miss Auntie. Yes, it's sure nice of you people to let us share your fire. Oh, anything to help in a storm. Hey, how do you like this? Now we're five. What did you say? Got another guest coming. Can you imagine? The Buckhorn's fancy enough. This fellow looks like kind of a gent. Where is he? Across the street. Just got out of a big Cadillac. You were right, Mr. Carlin. This is a party. Doris, now you have other visitors to worry about. You wonder how much each knows or how little. You're only sure of the latest arrival, who turns out to be Frank Gentry's mouthpiece, Ben Watson. You appear not to recognize one another before the others. Wait for a chance to talk privately. 
But that chance doesn't come immediately. The, um, Buckhorn Hotel's okay, isn't it, Mr. White? I should say so. Imagine all of us selecting the very same spot. Yeah. Uh, chummy. Real chummy. Mm-hmm. Well, the storm seems to have let up. Heck, I see nothing wrong with getting out the old sleeping bag, staying the night anyway. What do you think, Sally? You're the boss, man. Sure, sure, the big boss. <laughs> uh, but uh, you'll be staying on a while. Check. <laughs> How about you, Miss Evans? Well, I'm not in a hurry, Mr. Carlin. No, no, I thought not. Look, let's stop the kidding, huh? All of us. Maybe we didn't figure there'd be such a crowd calls for a five-way split now. But we're here, we're stuck with each other. What are we going to do about it? Mr. Carlin, why don't you climb down from your soapbox? Leave us alone. If we all know why we're here, you don't have to remind us. A good suggestion, Miss Evans. Okay. Okay. Sounds like it's time for me to take a walk. But don't go far. Oh, don't worry, sweetheart. Huh. Hey, what's eating the guy? What's it all about? I'm sure I don't know. Do you, Mr. Watson? You haven't an idea in the world. Oh, well, let's get some shut-eye, Sally. Well, I'll help you get the sleeping bag. By the way, this time you're taking the one that doesn't inflate anymore. <laughs> oh, all right, honey. Well, Ben? Rather a surprise for each of us, wasn't it, Doris? Where's Frank Gentry? Now, never mind about that. This Rick Carlin could spell trouble for us. I was thinking the same thing. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to get rid of him. It won't be easy. A rugged individual, I'd say. And there's a lot at stake. Frank told you everything, didn't he? He told me enough. Mm-hmm. Enough to cost him his life, hmm? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, you're safe with me, darling. Maybe. As long as I'm useful. Look, what are we going to do? Cut it, well, what did you say to the Masons? Why? They took off in the station wagon. <laughs> Probably what you said when you made that crack about a five-way split. You mean they really were tourists? Just happened to drop in here? Of course. And that split crack of yours naturally frightened them. Matter of fact, Mr. Carlin, you frightened me a little. Oh, sorry, Miss Evans. Don't, don't let me frighten you too much. Oh, no. Don't worry, I won't do that. You're not as worried about Rick anymore, are you, Doris? Ben is proving useful to you. Very useful. But Rick is dangerous, and you've got to have a plan. You want to talk it out with Ben alone. Your gaze wanders over to Rick, standing in the doorway of the hotel. Calm, relaxed. A cigarette dangling from his lips. Weather's cleared up nice. Real nice. Wouldn't you say, watching? No, uh, yes, yes, it has. Still kind of cold in here, though. How about uh, stirring up the fire? Oh, of course. Uh, not much wood left. There's plenty around in the building... Uh, try the back rooms. I, I broke up some old furniture before. I'll need the flashlight. Oh, it's uh, right down the bar. Help yourself. Well, here you are, Mr. Watson. Thank you. Have to see you outside back of the building, please. Oh, I don't know. We... How about letting me in on the secret, huh? Well, I was just asking for a cigarette. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm all out. Uh, excuse me, Miss Evans, while I uh, get some wood. Then I'll, I think I'll get... If my... it is a smoke you want... Miss Evans, I'll be glad to oblige. Uh, well, thanks. But I prefer my own brand. I have some in the car. You stroll casually down the boardwalk. And then once around the corner, you hurry along the building to the rear of the hotel. As you'd hope, Ben is there waiting for you. Well, Doris, what have you in mind for Mr. Carlin? Along the corridor, Ben, leading to the back door, about halfway, I noticed a trap door. Now, go on. It leads to the cellar, but the steps have rotted away. It's a long drop, and there's no way to get back. I see. You can set it up now. Then come back out here and wait. 
I'll take care of the rest. It's all set, isn't it, Dora? You know exactly what you have to do. When Rick notices that Watson hasn't returned, he'll go down the corridor to investigate, and you'll be close behind to give him the necessary push at the right time. You go back to your car, pick up the cigarettes, and stroll around to the front of the hotel. Rick isn't there. You hurry forward, and then as you enter the hotel, you breathe a sigh of relief. Rick is standing by the fireplace, staring into the dying embers. Have trouble finding his eggs? Well, what makes you think that? You were gone a long time. Well, a few minutes. My, my. You uh, missed me? Yeah. Hmm. I missed you. Trouble you for a light? No trouble. Thanks. The oh, fire is getting low, isn't it? Yeah. Watson not back yet? What's keeping him? Watson. Oh, uh, he won't be back. He what? He's gone, sweetheart. Now that leaves just the two of us. <laughs> What's the matter, baby? You disappointed? Disappointed? About what? Watson is leaving so suddenly. Doesn't mean a thing. Sure. He wasn't your type anyway. A guy like Watson just... Uh-oh. Oh, car coming. Better douse these candles. They went by. That's a relief. Yeah. Glad they didn't decide to park here for the night. Might have made things awkward. Well, guess we can light up again. There we are. Look, Miss Evans, relax. You don't have a thing to worry about. Really? You got me figured all wrong, sweetheart. Oh, then I had you figured wrong, too, when you first showed up. Is that so? Yeah, I figured you didn't have the nerve that you'd beat it first chance you got, but you didn't. <laughs> so, I like a dame with nerve. Sure, you're scared, but you're still here. That's right, Rick. I'm still here. And I'm glad you are, because I have a deal to offer you. A, a deal? Mm -hmm. Surprise. A little. I've decided to cut you in. Cut me in? On what, Rick? Little deal. It's going to be dumped into our laps right out of the sky. Garando, the counterfeit plates. I see. <laughs> you know, wondering how come I'm so well informed? They're kind of. Yeah, well, I get around. See? I, I get around a lot, and I generally keep my eyes and ears open. It pays off. Mm. Only a month ago, I happened to be in Manila. You ever been there? No. Well, you liked it. I, I did. I hated to leave. But I just couldn't pass up a certain opportunity that came my way, so I hopped aboard a freighter for the state. The SS Malaga, perhaps? Well, that's nice. Nice mm -hmm. guess. Meet some interesting people aboard? Oh, very yeah. interesting. Especially a guy named Frank Gentry. <laughs> sort of a shock to read in the paper that he was fished out of the bay. Who dunked him? You or Watson? Does it make any difference? No. No, I guess it doesn't, sweetheart. So now, what about that deal I'm offering? Well, naturally, I'm interested. I'm curious, too. Oh, no, what about? You say you want to cut me in. Why? Let's just say because I like you. Oh, that's sweet, Rick. But let's say there's another reason. Sure. You were pretty close to Frank Gentry. He had a lot of good things going. You know all about him, his connections, everything. I guess I do. Almost. Right. Well, me, I'm sort of new in this counterfeiting racket, but you know the ropes, so I'm offering you a 50-50 split. <laughs> I can hardly refuse such an offer, can I? Unless you want to wind up in the cellar with Watson. But it... Cellar? <laughs> yeah. I caught him messing around a trap door back there in the corridor while you were out getting your cigarettes. He won't bother us anymore. Rick. Rick, listen. Yeah, the plane and our friend Garando. Right on time. Come on. The two of you hurry outside. 
see the light of a plane circle overhead and hear it land. Then the figures of two men approach, walking towards you down the main street of the old town. You know that one will be Garando with the precious plates. His companion, of course, is the pilot. Hiya. Hi. I'm Hal Williams. I guess you know who my passenger is. Yeah. Hello, Garando. Well, I just wanted to be sure I delivered my passenger safe and sound. Now, how about my money? Frank Gentry said 500, right? Right. Here. One, two, three, four, five. Thanks. Yes, I'll be heading back now. Good night. Good night, Williams. Well, Mr. Garando, shall we go inside? Uh, okay. Sure, sure. Have a nice trip? Yeah, fine trip. No complaints. You have the plates. Sure, I got the plates. And the package here. Only I was told to turn them over to Frank Gentry. Oh, Frank Gentry's out of the picture now. Miss Evans um, eliminated him. We're running the show now. How I know that? Because I'm telling you, Garando, I did eliminate Frank Gentry, and I wouldn't hesitate to eliminate you. Might even be better that way. I'll give you just five seconds to hand over those plates. No. Put away that gun, please. Here, take them. Well, Doris? These are the plates, all right, Rick. The real thing, I know. Okay. Now it's for you, Garando. No, wait. Put away your gun, too, please. I don't like your attitude, Garando. You sound like a guy who'd kind of like to make trouble. And I don't like guys that give me trouble. No. Don't! <laughs> afraid of Rick Carlin from the moment you stepped into the old Buckhorn Hotel in Morristown, hadn't you, Doris? You even thought he might kill you before the arrival of the plane, bringing the forger Garando and the counterfeit plates. But the unexpected happened. Rick had asked you to be his partner. Then when Garando arrived and turned the plates over to you, Rick had leveled the gun at the little counterfeit. Then something even more unexpected had happened. You heard a shot but it was Rick who crumbled to the floor. And the man who had fired the shot was standing in the doorway. Hal Williams, the airplane pilot. You sure had me worry, Mr. Williams. I was outside that door all the time, Garando. Heard everything. Wait a minute. What's the idea? Is this a double cross? The idea, lady, is that you're under arrest. Arrest? You can't arrest... But I can. I'm with the Immigration Service. Immigration Service? Yes. We nailed Garando and his original pilot when their plane was forced down just inside the border. We made a little deal with Garando, and I took his pilot's place. A deal? Yeah. We promised to go easy with him if he'd lead us to the man that wanted these counterfeit plates. Garando thought it would be Frank Gentry. But since he and I both heard you say you killed him, it looks like we found his murder as well. Wouldn't you say so, miss? Whistler. Listen next week when once again the United States Air Forces in Europe present The Whistler. <laughs>